So uh, we're going to move on from the piecewise defined function to another type of piecewise function. Now these are called absolute value functions. And they are not that hard. You just have to understand how to build them. Okay? So quickly I will explain. Like absolute value of x is always what? Positive, right? Because that's what we know. Now here's the thing. Like when I have absolute value of x as a function, I want to graph it. It's a complex process because I first have to be able to express this function in its uh, different uh, part. For example, I don't know the value of x, do I? I do not know what x is because x is just x. So now the question is, absolute value of x will be equal to x if x is positive. Do you understand what that means? We need to understand that because if you don't understand that, it's hard to grasp the uh, uh, this concept. Do you know why is x is x is positive? Why? Because it's less than negative. So it's an absolute value, so it's only going to be positive. All right. So yeah. So for example, what is absolute value of two? Two. Two. two right. What's absolute value of negative two? Two. 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 Right. So basically, absolute value of x is going to be x if x is positive. Meaning, if x is a positive value, it's going to be the same thing. Correct. Now, it's going to be 0 if x is 0. That makes sense, right? Because I just have to plug it in here. Correct? If x is 0, because 0 is my what? Again, remember, 0 is my base, my, base, my limiting value. That's the, everything is built around the 0 here, right? Now here, it will be negative x if x is negative. What am I trying to say here? Value is always positive. Exactly. So if x is negative, the negative x would be positive. That's right. Did y'all get that? Right? Yeah. So, for example, I put absolute value of negative 2, that gives me 2, right? Ne negative 2 is what? It's really negative, negative 2. That's what it is, right? So, I'm saying here, the absolute value of x is negative x if x is negative. If x is negative, I have to add another negative to the x to make it what? A positive value. Does that make sense? Right? So this is why I, I created this uh, piecewise function here. So absolute value of x is x, suppose x is positive, and it's going to be 0 if x is 0, and it's going to be negative x if my x value is negative, because I don't know what x is. So I have to consider all three options. Does that make sense? Right? Now, this is where uh, some of us get like, a little bit like confused. Now we have to graph this function, correct? Now, absolute value function is a fun function because it always looks like a V or a V that's reverse. So, I love this function. So now, if I want to build this function, right, how many tables am I going to make? Three. Three tables, thank you very much. Right? So, I have X, Y now. Remember, I, let me explain this again. This is not, this X here means, in other words, Y is equal to X y is equal to 0, and y is equal to negative x. That's what this means, right? Because f of x and y mean the same thing, correct? We talked about that in our previous chapter, okay? So now, here, what would be my first value for x? 0. 0. Choose another one. 1. 1. So when x is 0, y is? 0. zero. And when x is 1, y is? 1. 1, right? So when x is 0, y is 0, right? And when x is 1, y is 1. Now, here's the problem. So I'm supposed to be going where? In this direction. Do I go past this? No. No, right? So now, I will have one here. Okay. Normally, an open circle, right? But you're going to see that we go, we're going to eliminate that open circle in a minute. Now, now when x is 0, y is what? 0. 0, right? And when x is 1, y will be? 0. 0, x is 0, so 0, 0 is just 1. We're not going to change that. So it's going to be right here. Right? Because when x is 0, y is what? Zero. 0. We only have one option. Because x is 0, y is 0. So that's only 1. Correct? And now we are here. So I'm going to start again with what? 0. zero. When x is 0, y will be? Negative 0. Which is? 0. zero. And I choose another one? Negative 1. And then y will be? Negative 1. Positive, positive, positive 1. Positive 1. Y is 0, 0. Negative 1, 1. And look. This is the absolute value function. Again, like it's a beautiful function if you know how to slice it correctly, right? It's always going to look like a V 
or it's going to be reversed. It depends on what we have. Okay. Now, this example here is pretty simple, but I'm going to do another one, and then we will understand how to build this function once and for all. Okay. Now, coming here, right? So, how, without even having this here, let me see if I can establish this, right? This is what I have. I'm starting with this. Absolute value of x minus 2. Suppose this is what I'm, I'm giving you, and I say graph this function, right? The first step is to build our piecewise component, correct? So absolute value is x minus 2. So we're going to go like this, just like the other one. Absolute value of x would be what? x minus 2 if what? Somebody help me here. If? x is greater than 0. No, x minus 2 is greater than 0. Right? x minus 2, because this whole thing is not just x. If this is positive, the absolute value is positive, right? If x minus 2 is more than 0. Does that make sense? Right? And you'll be what? You'll be 0 if x is equal to what? No? Positive 2, you mean? Because if I set this equal to 0, I add 2, it would be 2, right? x equals 2. Does that make sense? Yes or no? No? All right, let's build it again. Let's do it. All right, let me explain it. Right? The point's not zero, it's here. So here, right, this is what we have, right? Absolute value of this number will be what? X minus 2 if this number is what? Greater than zero. Greater right? There you go. In other words, if this number is greater than what? Zero. Two. Two, right? It's the same thing. I'm saying the same thing here. Does that make sense? Right? Now, so let's say this is our first option, right? Now, what if this thing is zero? The inside is zero, right? X minus two is zero, that means X is equal to what? Zero. Zero. X is equal not to, not to zero, X is equal to? Negative two. Positive two. For this to be equal to zero, that means X has to be equal to what? Two. Two, right? So therefore, this will be zero, if x is equal to 2. Does that make sense? Yes or no? Not really. Just keep on going. We'll figure it out. No, let me go back and do it again. I want, you to show, I want to show you what's actually going on here, right? It's confusing. No. Is the point not, the point not on the y-axis then? It's on the x-axis? Uh, which point? Um, the, um, um, the, the point of the absolute value function. It's on the x-axis. Yeah, so here, so what you need to do is this. This number here is what is causing this absolute value to change, right? So now I want absolute value is always going to be positive, correct? Right? So now, if this number inside is positive, then this is going to be the same, right? So absolute value of f of x is going to be x minus 2 if x minus 2 is positive. Yes or no? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Because if this is positive, then you'll be this one. Right? In other words, x is more than 2 because I'm just adding 2 on both sides. Does that make sense to this point? Yes. Yeah, right. Alright. Now, what if this number inside was 0? What if this was 0? Right? That means x is equal to what? Zero. 2. Because you're going to do x minus 2 is equal to two, 0, x is equal to 2. Right? Yeah. If this is 0, that means x is equal to 2. Correct? Now. Wait, what does it mean? Negative 2? Oh. It's 2. x minus 2 is equal to 0. You add 2 on both sides, that means x equals to 2. Huh? If this is equal to 0. Yeah. Solve for x. Oh. What would it be? <laughs> Two. Does that make sense now to everybody? Yes or no? All right. Now, what if this number was negative, right? What if this is like this? That means x is what? x minus 2 is less than 0, right? With another word, x is what? Less than 2. That's all this means. So this is how you build this function. It's x minus 2 if the number is positive. It's 0 if x is 2. 
and therefore is negative the opposite of this number if x is less than 2. Does that make sense now? All right, now we can build our graphs. Right, x, y, x, y, x, y. Now, here I'm going to start with x is what? My first value will be? Yes, I'm waiting. Two, two right? And x is two, y is what? Zero. Zero. And another value, when x is? Three. Three, y is? Three minus two? Yeah. One, right? Here we have it, when x is zero, when uh, x is two, y is what? Zero, right? And here we're going to do the same thing. When x is, we're going to start at 2. Y is what? Yeah. Zero. And when x is, uh, uh, take another one, less than 2. Uh, one. one. X, uh, Y is 1 minus 2 is negative 1. Yeah. Two negatives, that's positive, right? And then we go back here and do the same thing. The rest is just understanding this process. So when x is 2, Y is zero, right? And when x is 3, y is 1, right here, right? So, and I want x to be more than 2, so I'm going to go this direction, right? And then when x is 2, y is 0, I already have that over here. And then when x is 1, y is 1. x is 1, y is 1, I'm here. This is the function. It's always going to look like a v, right? If your function does not look like a v, guess what? Something ain't right. Okay, it's going to look like this. So the, the most important part is knowing how to build the function based on the number that's given. So we're going to do several examples. And then tomorrow we're going to do some more examples. I'm going to stop here. And I'm going to let this, you can marinate on that, right? I don't want to move on until we all understand this. So let's, let's do that. Let's work some more examples. And then we're going to go from there.